Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I hope you are doing well. I don't want to say I'm really glad July is almost over, because I'm afraid if I say that, I'll jinx it, and that August will be somehow worse. I mean, you know, 2020, 2020, 2020, wow, I don't know where that came from. 2020 has just been crazy already, and... For me, July was like, you know, said to the whole year of 2020, hold my beer. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to see how crazy, just show you how crazy July can be. It has been an emotional roller coaster. I am so tired. Plus, I have another sinus infection. Those of you who are regular listeners, I'm, you're probably sick of me saying I have another sinus infection. Uh, several years of, of podcasts and how many sinus infections have I had? Yeah, sorry about that. At least I can't transmit them through the podcast. I hope that would be really awkward if I could do that. That is not a super superpower I want. In um, other news, July hasn't been all bad. It's been a lot bad. But I, my hubby is trying to get back onto his low-carb diet. And so he keeps sending me all of these crazy fun links that he finds, one of which today was um, for low-carb cereal. He loves, loves cereal, loves to eat it as a snack. But cereal is not low-carb. And so this is not an endorsement in any way, shape, or form. But he found today um, low-carb cereal by Magic Spoon. And this is our latest adventure in trying low-carb food. He is ordering some boxes and we're going to give it a shot. I don't know how it'll turn out, but hopefully it will help to replace his um, regular cereal craving because that man could eat his weight in cereal on a daily basis and be perfectly happy, but his blood sugar, not so much. <laughs> so, so you know, July, not a great month, but hey, uh, finding some low-carb alternatives. There's got to be a bright side, right? Low-carb alternatives, that's my bright side. And books. Books are always my bright side. I mentioned at the end of the last episode, which was 872 years ago, that... Um, I had two interviews with authors of short stories in a row, which I find kind of fun the way the the interviews fall because they are scheduled so far in advance. I don't realize always until they happen what kind of coincidences might come up. So today I'm speaking with author Nikki Dolson about her short story collection. It is called Love and Other Criminal Behavior. The first collection from noted short fiction author Nikki Dolson. Love and Other Criminal Behavior provides readers 15 tales of crime fiction, all centered on black women from different regions and backgrounds, addressing themes of race, class, gender, marriage, deceit, betrayal, and sinister comeuppance. The stories offer unique and differing perspectives and would make great fodder for an anthology series a la Black Mirror but focused on crime, love, boxing, and knives. <laughs> there are so many things to grab your attention in that brief paragraph. First of all, mad props for the use of the word comeuppance. Not a word you get in a blurb very often. Also, uh, you know, reference to Black Mirror. It's not my favorite series, but my husband loves it. Not as much as he loves cereal, but he does love Black Mirror. And I can see the, the I can see the, the, the similarities in Nikki's stories and those of Black Mirror, although I will say I prefer Nikki, Nikki's stories over those of Black Mirror. So that's just me. But uh, And then I, I like that they focus on crime, love, 
boxing and knives. I mean, <laughs> obviously love and other criminal behaviors, you know it's going to be about love and crime, but boxing and knives, there you go. <laughs> I'm easily entertained by blurbs, aren't I? But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and turn to the interview with Nikki so she can tell you more about this short story collection, and I will stop talking about cereal and come up and, and other strange things. So again, the book is called Love and Other Criminal Behavior. The author is Nikki Dolson. And let's turn now to that interview. Hi, Nikki. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, hello, Sarah. Thanks for having me. I am excited to have you here. We are going to talk about your collection of short stories. It's called Love and Other Criminal Behavior. But before we get to the book, let's um, let's learn a little bit more about you. If you could share a bit about yourself, that would be great. Well, I am uh, a, a mom. Um, I've got three kids. Uh, they're, they're mostly grown. I have one more in high school, one more through the gauntlet. Um uh, and I uh, work in civil engineering out here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, write uh, whenever I can, which is on Post-it notes. It's it's all the time. <laughs> and that's me, mostly. Nice. Yeah. Do, you, do you just have Post-it notes stuck in random places then? Oh, honestly, they live in my purse, and I'm like, where is that note? I know I wrote <laughs> that, that line of dialogue somewhere. Or that really great title, which I never use. If I write it down and post it now, it's never going to be a title I use. But I'm like, this is the best one yet. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, so Love and Other Criminal Behavior is a collection of, is it 13 short stories? It is. Um, so it's 13 short stories. So talk a little bit about those stories as a, a, as a collection. Um, these stories, I've written them uh, over about ooh, 14 years. Um, they run the gamut from uh, straight up crime fiction um, to to just relationships between uh, mothers and daughters and um, fathers and daughters and just uh, I think they're funny and sad and often bloody, um, even when there's no bodies. <laughs> um, but I think they all talk a little bit about love and what love can make you do. Uh, those other criminal behaviors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it, and it really is uh, about not just romantic love, but there's there's a lot of the the different types of relationships in here mm -hmm. and what those relationships can make you do or make you feel and um, et cetera. So what was your initial inspiration? Well, you said you've been writing them over for 14 years. So then yeah. um, what, what made you finally decide to put them into a collection? Oh, my publisher came calling and went, so you got anything? And I'm like, I don't, I don't have anything. And they came back and you sure you don't have anything? Cause I would really like it if you had something. And I'm like, I have these stories. And they're like, yes. <laughs> and so suddenly I was, um, uh, I had to put together what seemed like a real collection and had to really figure out what it is that I love about short story collections. Um, cause there are some that I absolutely adore and I'm like, okay, what is it about those that I can apply to mine? Um, you know, and I had a, a writing teacher who, when I told him that I was doing this, he also was like, high five. Um, he's been dying for me to do it, but, um, just, there's a lot of, you have to figure out to, to put together a collection. I mean, if you don't start writing towards you know, this is going to be a collection, you know, and you have an idea what those themes are. It's like, what is it that I'm hung up on as a writer, as a person? Um, what works well together as stories also? Um, and I happened across another short story collection from another excellent writer, um, Helen Ellis. Uh, she wrote American Housewife. That collection um, was the the perfect 
version of a story collection, I think. Um, and it was exactly what I wanted mine to be. Um, and, you know, she has these stories, they're not uh, all literary or all, I mean, they're just, they run the gamut. These people in her stories do everything good, bad, and different. I mean, there's kidnapping, there's ghosts, there's, you know, murder. Um, and I thought, okay, she can do that, so can I. But again, still, what is it that links this? And for me, um, it was love and relationships. And then it was just kind of weeding out what I thought were better stories um, and not so great ones, um, rewriting some of them um, to try to make them stronger. Uh, and then ultimately, I was like, 13 sounds good. I have to stop touching it now. Here, take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen's like a good number for something, you know, for something like this. Um, yeah. So you had to kind of weed, through, you know, go go through your collection, decide what what stories fit, what what didn't. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any connections between the stories? I know there's there's at least two stories that have um, one character or a character that that crosses over. Any any other connections throughout the the book? Well, so there are uh, the boxing stories, um, which there's there's character in uh, taking the hit Kendra, who shows up in another story um, around boxing, um, and then there are uh, I think there's a dance teacher in on Mondays we dance in the park who shows up or who's a reference in Mendelton in the park. Um, and, you know, I wrote some years and years apart and didn't necessarily uh, cotton on to the fact that I had done that. But, yeah, <laughs> there's a little crossover in some of those places. Yeah. When you sit down to to write a short story or, I mean, how does that process work for you? Do you just, does, does an idea pop in? Do you have a post-it note in your purse that says, write this idea? <laughs> How does that usually work for you? Um, you know, there might be an idea that's floating around in my purse, but if it's floating around in my purse, it's also floating around in my subconscious. But truthfully, it's a character shows up and they're saying this thing. And when I focus on it, it's like, oh, this, they, you know, they want to rob a bank. Why, why do they want to rob a bank? And it just, you know, if it's, I feel like if it's a strong enough idea, it just kind of rolls out at me. <laughs> like, here we are, you, you know, they're going to rob a bank. Why are they robbing a bank? Well, it's because of this. Oh, what are the ramifications of that? You know, and just the pieces come together. Um, let's say I don't have to work at it. But I also think a strong story, at least for me, the strongest stories I've written have shown up like that. And it's just like, here is this character. They are going on a journey and they're going to take you by your hand. And, and, and you know, I'm just trying to write to keep up with them. And so what do you think draws you to writing short stories um, as opposed to novellas or or full length novels, which you have, but um, what do you think draws you to writing the short stories? Um, short stories are my first love, hundred um, percent. It is, uh, I you know, it's that saying you can write the perfect short story, and you know, a novel is a flawed thing, but it's supposed to be. Um, but it's the idea that you could write something perfect and entertain someone and, you know, have them be in that world for, you know, 20 minutes, a half hour, an hour, um, and exist there. And the short story is this perfect thing <laughs> that I'm always trying to, to, to perfect. Um, I have written longer, um, uh, the longer book, my first book, was really a set of linked stories that then came together. Um, and and honestly, if I could write a novel the way I can write a short story, 
um, I would probably write one of those. But I'm I'm working on it, but it's not easy. <laughs> not that short stories are, but I seem to be able to do one far easier than the other. <laughs> right. Sure. Well, and you know, it you you've got a full time job and a family, and so I, I imagine that there's some time issues in there. Yeah. That was probably an understatement, but I'm, I'm tend, I tend to be pretty good at those. So uh, now that you've got an idea of the nature of this short story collection by Nikki Dolson, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. And when we come back, Nikki will be talking about what she likes about writing crime fiction. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. TSMC Beauty Tips Podcast gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Today I am speaking with author Nikki Dolson about her new collection of short stories. It's called Love and Other Criminal Behavior. So let's go ahead and turn back to that interview. What draws you then to writing crime fiction? My love of movies, like murder mysteries, were always the thing I watched with my mom when I was younger. Um, And then that just you know, morphed into a, a genuine love of uh, Alfred Hitchcock movies. Um, and from there, the springboard to, you know, who were the greats who were writing it? Um, you know, you get Chandler, you get Hammett, James and Kane, though, um, I think uh, of the the old ones um, are the, he's the one that I, I love the most is James and Kane. His stories, um, Post When I Was Ring Twice, uh, uh, Mildred Pierce, uh, Double Indemnity. Um, these stories are so very much regular people veering away from the straight and narrow that they know they should stay on. Um, for, 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 for reasons that are understandable and sometimes not, but I also, I think if you look at their lives, just from living in this, their lives aren't really bad sometimes. They're, they're just not what they wanted. And that is the part that, that gets me. You could have, uh, you could have everything you, you thought you wanted, you know, the husband, the picket fence, the two kids, the dog, the, you know, the car that doesn't, uh, you don't have to worry about it not working, you know, the job, you know, the, the, the nice neighbors, the nice neighborhood. And still, these characters self-sabotage. They go off the beaten path, you know, the, the path they know to, to risk it all um, for in hindsight, things that not always were worth it. And I love that aspect of crime fiction. I like that. That's, that's why I write that. Um, I'd rather write the, the, the regular guy doing the thing, the, the bad thing than the policeman who's trying to catch them. Um, that's, that's where my, my point of view comes in. And yeah, I think that's um, that definitely comes through in the 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 short story collection is that it's it's pretty much just you know regular people going about their lives and then you know something maybe happens or something you know um, causes them to end up in this situation. Uh, I don't want to make it sound like it's all external forces, but 
you know, basically just regular people living their lives and they find themselves in these extraordinary circumstances or even not necessarily extraordinary circumstances, but um, I, I think it could happen to a lot of people and I'm grateful that I haven't found myself in many of these situations. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm always like, I would never do that. This is great because I would never make that choice. Uh, right. Yeah, I guess it lives vicariously through my, my characters are making just really unfortunate decisions. You know, they don't, I, I, I like to think they don't, they don't think past the next moment or they think they're so smart and they've got it three moves ahead, but they're not really factoring in everything that might happen. Um, and I think the, you know, the average person is, inherently good and whether that's because they're afraid of consequences or because they just would never do bad things um it is there are those gamblers out there who risk they just to see if they can get away with it and that's the person i like to write about well, and it seems um, it seems appropriate then, since you said gamblers, that a lot yeah. of the stories take place in <laughs> Las Vegas. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Is there, are there, uh, excuse me, a, a, a couple of stories that you want to highlight? I mean, you know, when there's 13 short stories, I don't want to just go through the book and give everything away <laughs> for people, but are there a couple that you'd like to highlight? Um. You know, depending on the hour, I have different favorites. But the first story, um, Georgianne, is a deep favorite of mine. Um, it is uh, maybe on its surface doesn't necessarily seem very Vegas, but it is very Vegas. It's it's not the Strip. Um, it's uh, an older neighborhood in town that I use uh, for where they live. It is. Uh, a little bit of my job, so I guess there's a little bit of me in it um, that way uh, that we touch on in there. Um, but it is, I guess the thing about Vegas, once you go away from the Strip, you could be anywhere, to save for the desert, you know. Um, you could, you, it, it's suburbia. You could be anywhere. Um, these little track homes and the little, you know, every house next to it is just a little bit different but mostly they all look related um and you know that's that's vegas here um can i can i jump uh, in sorry on the first yeah story? Oh, absolutely. no no, no, no on, on georgie and what i liked about that was that we really got a good sense of this relation of these relationships so it's four mm -hmm. couples um and even though it's a short story you, you did a great job of really feeling in how these relationships came about and um, how they've how they've evolved over the years so yeah I mean it, it could have been anywhere but I really liked how you managed to convey that whole backstory without a lot a lot of pages <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you um it is again that story was like the those stereotypical, like the 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 June Cleaver and the the 1950s um, ideal that I wanted in that, um, but with a little bit more of these are people who are are they want to climb those ladders, they want to be, uh, you know look down their nose at people like I, I honestly as much as I love that story I don't necessarily think any of those people are nice people <laughs> they have they're no. not pretty nice yeah <laughs> no. they're not I mean like they have but I mean like they even you know not nice people have people they care about you know they're it's it's uh I guess that's one of the reasons I really like that story I think I hit on the thing I was going for um, and that was one, again, that kind of showed up um, nearly whole cloth. <laughs> um, and I think um, uh, the other one was uh, How to Be Good, 
was another story that kind of took place in a familiar Vegas neighborhood. Um, but, you know, it's thieves and murder. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you do, do you do much research for your stories or how does that process work for you in terms of writing? Um, I did do research. Uh, boxing, um, I think, is the, the biggest thing that's shown in any of these stories. Um, I was writing uh, other stories that ended up being in my first book. And I had one of them was about a boxer. And I just really delved into that. You know, I have uh, kind of a love-hate relationship with boxing. But, you know, how they do, HBO used to have the, you know, Monday Night Fights or whatever. Um, but before the actual fight, they would have, they would like go out with one of the, the boxers and look at how they're training and where their mind is at. And really that process of them like settling into getting ready for that, that big fight. Um, and I love to watch that. So I watched a, a, a lot of that. I read a lot about boxing. Um, uh, Joyce Carol Oates, uh, I believe, did a, a book about uh, essays about boxing that was really helpful. And I really just tried to immerse myself in that. Um, and then the residuals, like I wrote those stories and it was great. And then, but the boxing kept showing up. So I wrote these things. <laughs> um, and then past that, I really, there was a lot of nice research uh, that's gone into that repeatedly shows up in my work. But somebody's always got a knife in some story, whether or not they use it, knife, scissors, um, sharp objects. So there's been a lot of research in that. Weapons, I guess. Is the... <laughs> so you're you're another author whose um, internet search history is probably pretty, pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, and I tend to do a lot of it at work. Well, I'm like working, working, working. Oh, could I do that? Like, there's a story that came out earlier this year that literally I was like. Can I pour bleach on somebody and set it on fire? This is not things a nice person researches, I feel. But no, it was important. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it was important and it doesn't work, actually. But um, it was good to know. <laughs> it was like, so I went down the rabbit hole of what could I use as an everyday household thing that would work to set somebody on fire if I needed to. So, um, yeah, that search history is on my work computer. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wow. <laughs> um, I think the story worked out well. Um, but yeah, it's not. My search history is problematic. <laughs> I, can, I can imagine, but it's you know, <laughs> as long as you're not looking it up because you well, as long as you're looking it up for writing purposes and and nothing else. <laughs> Yes, it's like, please look at the work product. Please see, but nobody dead <laughs> my on me. Look, look. Yes, the thing. That's right. The thing. <laughs> Are you working on anything now? Um, I just finished writing a, a story for an anthology. So I am a little bit between uh, projects. On August 1st, it is my goal to settle down and write uh, a longer story. Um, I would like for it to be a novel, but I think I'm just shooting for a novella. <laughs> um, but it's been kind of percolating. And I think I figured it out, but I just, I need a little bit of a break, but I'm then I'm gonna settle in to try to write the longer story through the end of the year. Well, good luck with that. That sounds That sounds fun. How, so you've got a you've got a full time job you've got a family you mm -hmm. are a writer how do you balance everything um, you know especially with homeschooling this past spring how 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 do you find the balance in all of those all of, well all of those relationships um, in the before time uh, I really did just feel time um, you know there's guilt. For all things. I should be at work more. I should be at home more. I should be, you know, there's just, it's the guilt is just endless and it goes everywhere. It's a mess. 
but I steal time. I steal time from work with my post-it notes um, and from home, from, you know, on the couch with the kids uh, on my laptop or writing notes into my phone as they, you know, pop into my head. Um, I don't know any other way to do it. Um, it, it. I don't even know if it's the best way for me to do it. It's just the way I've settled into. Um, with uh, the pandemic, my children, um, of which two of them are actually over 20 now, but um, my my youngest, uh, they he's been with his dad. So I've actually been home alone. I mean, you would think that would let me write, but uh, alas, I feel like the, the general stress has not changed my writing habit at all. I'm still just writing in the margins all the time. Um, the bulk of my time is either I'm on my you know, computer working from home um, or sadly catching up on all the shows I didn't watch and still, oh, that's a good idea. And I jot it down on my phone and then I go back to binge watching because this is what soothes my soul right now. <laughs> I, I don't think that you're alone in that. I think that that's a pretty common, <laughs> you know, it, we've all yeah. had to learn new, new normals and, and new, just figuring out how we are existing in this, this interesting time that we're living in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got to admit that I, I haven't really been catching up on things that I should watch on series that I should watch. I have just continue to be obsessed with baking shows. I think I've mentioned before my obsession with baking shows, and that has not changed. If I'm watching TV, it's generally, unless I'm watching with my husband, it is generally lately a baking show. And I have found all kinds of baking shows between our various streaming services. I, yeah, I, I'm sure I could bake something fabulous. No, not really. I'd be one of those people that nailed it. <laughs> um, on that note, we are going to take another break, and when we come back, we'll talking about how Nikki got into writing short stories, writing in general. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. When I am not watching baking shows, I am interviewing authors, which is even better. So uh, let's go ahead and get back to one of those interviews. Again, I am speaking with Nikki Dolson about her short story collection, Love and Other Criminal Behaviors. So is writing something that you've always wanted to do? When, when did you start writing to try to publish? Um. I started writing with the intent to publish in 2006. Um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm unhappy in other aspects of my life. And I didn't have that creative outlet. Um, uh, I did so many things trying to do that. <laughs> but then I was like, I used to love to write. Let's just write. We're going to write and get published because people do that. <laughs> So I took a, a writing workshop at the community college thinking they would be like, okay, we're going to read some short stories, talk about some things. Maybe I give you a prompt or two and you write it and you turn it in and we go. But I didn't understand the concept of workshop 
and I sat in that class and the teacher uh, looked at me and went, okay, next week you're gonna have a story. And I went, what? 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 <laughs> and I had to have a story in a week. So I wrote a story in a week. Um, it shall never see the light of day, but that story, uh, when I turned it in, that teacher um, said, oh, there's some good things in here, but I gotta tell you, there's this one line um, that I wish I had written. Uh, good job. And I have wow. carried that piece of, of just feedback for, forever. Like it was, it was the push that I needed that you're not good yet, but you know, you're getting, you, there's hope there, you know, and um, that teacher uh, is, is still a really important person in my life. And uh, he's always very uh, supportive and he's uh, a big part of the reason why I kept at it. Um, you know, but positive reinforcement with, I guess we should say, tough love. You know, this is not good right here, though. This was good. But the rest of this, ooh, no. <laughs> um, right, but at least there was that one really encouraging part that, that you were able to take with you and kind of nurture. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, you I know, think... and late... uh, Go I would say this, that um, later on, um, there were other teachers who helped me with that. And who, again, you, you know, again, you run across that one person who, like, gets you. And they're like, you belong here. And then I found kind of a, the, you know, community, um, which really uh, helped me understand things. And, again, made me the, the writer I am now. Um, so there's been a lot of people on that journey. <laughs> No, but that's good. I think, you know, there's, there, it, writing can be an isolating or solitary adventure, but uh, there's also so many people along the way that, that help you and help you to hone the craft and, and you, you know, bounce ideas off of each other and, and, you know, beta readers and all of those things really help you to, to get better. Yeah. So. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So from your particular experience, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Um, find your people, whatever you write. Um, find other writers. Um, obviously, right now, we can't all get together. But having somebody to, to talk about writing with, um, to talk about that great thing that you read, to ask questions about, you know, how do I write a party scene? Um, you know, and, and what books do you think that? To have a community of people who can be like, you know, go look up this book. There's a party scene in there. Um, see how this person did it in this short story or in this novel. Um, it was uh, incredibly important to, to have found people who were willing to offer up that advice, who were willing to uh, read even just little snippets of my work, or quite honestly, just talk about writing. I mean, I don't, I can't tell you how many things I've just figured out just by talking about it. Just, you know, what is it that you like or what is it you're trying to do and bounce that off of somebody else or listen to them when they bounce their ideas off of you. Um, or what you love about a story, or what you hate it. Um, it's it's like you need to to read also, and you need to to talk about it. And I think both of those things feed the the subconscious mind, which then feeds into the conscious mind when you're writing. Um, you know, read and read and talk to people, and then write. Always thank right. you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Um, are there any of your other writings that you've done that you would like to highlight at this point? My first book, it's like that that first workshop class, I wrote the first story that would later become um, All Things Violent. Um, like that is a, a set of uh, 
Scannerlink stories that came together to be that novel. Um, and it is like a lot of the stories in Love and Other Criminal Behavior um, about relationships. Um, but in this case, for all being silent, it's the contract killer with boyfriend problem. So the killing happens, but it's not really the point in that one. Um, but it's uh, as some of the first things I, I wrote and cut my teeth on to, to learn how to write, um, it's near and dear <laughs> to the heart. It's your baby. I understand that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. I know you, well, wait, let me, let me backtrack. Um, when you take the time to read for yourself, what do you like to read? Um, I go back and forth. Uh, right now I'm on a big science fiction kick. Uh, science fiction is uh, my second love. Uh, I guess they hard sci-fi. Um, you know, spaceships and new planets and that kind of thing. That is, is truly uh, what I enjoy to read. So books like um, Anne Leckie's series, uh, Ancillary Justice, um, is great. Uh, Martha Wells has uh, the Murderbot Diaries. Oh, Murderbot, everybody should read Murderbot. It's so they're so enjoyable. Um, and I know I'm saying murder bot, but there's not a lot of murder. <laughs> it's just with it. You just look up murder bot. Don't be turned off by the murder in it, really. Um, uh, so I'm reading a lot of sci fi. Um, but when I'm not reading that, I am definitely reading within my, my chosen genre. Um, my friend's book, uh, S.A. Cosby just came out in Blacktop Wasteland. This is getting a lot of buzz, but it is, I read it in draft form, and it's so great. Um, he's writing about, you know, a, a part of the South that doesn't get normally written about. And it's the Black man and his family, and again, what uh, what you do for family, to, to take care of them, to keep them safe, um, and also what are our, our, the ghosts uh, in our family can drive us to do. Um, love or the lack thereof um, has a profound effect on the characters in his book. And it's great. Um, gosh, what else? Uh, there's a book called Cottonmouth. Um, and of course, since I'm on the spot and completely forgetting her name, I'm a terrible person. But it's called Cottonmouth. Um, I totally get that, though. <laughs> um, she is uh, a, a great writer. I enjoy that book. Um, Kelly J. Ford. There we go. Kelly J. Ford's Cottonmouth. Um, again, it is about, uh, it, it, it is, she gets the feel, the setting. These people are alive on the page. They are hard and heartbroken and and what Kelly J. Ford does on the page, um, that book will stay with you. Uh, and I don't know how to talk about it more without giving it away. But Cottonmouth with Kelly J. Ford, so great. Um, so I mean there's so many there's so many great books. And then, you know, if you're just reading standard mysteries, just just, you know, Agatha Christie. You know, she's up there, and if I, I cannot write, I cannot write mysteries like that. I want to so desperately, um, you know, but there are great, great mysteries out there um, from writers of color, uh, you know, from Walter Mosley, Kelly Garrett's series, uh, Detected by Day. Um, I love Kelly Garrett. Mm -hmm. She's, she's great and amazing and i was so sad that, that, that her series stopped at two books um but hollywood homicide and hollywood ending um are well worth your time uh to be entertained and to be immersed in a, a murder mystery to that's fun also um mm -hmm. and although my my i write a lot about 
bloods and bodies, so maybe my idea of fun is different for everybody else's. But <laughs> um, gosh, there's so much good. There's so, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. Have you got that? <laughs> I read a lot. No, no. Uh, I get that. When people ask me, what, what's your favorite book? Or what, you know, I'm looking for a new book to read. It's like, how much time have you got? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you need to narrow it down for me. I'm like, do you like dead bodies? Okay, no. Okay, we'll pass that aside. Okay, <laughs> do you like? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, but it, it, there's so much good stuff out there. Um, I, I just, I, I could tell you all day. <laughs> So uh, I'm 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 almost afraid to to ask and make you go down another rabbit hole. But what have you been binge watching? Oh well, first and foremost, um, I don't know about anybody else on the planet, but Old Guard, the Old Guard, uh, the Netflix movie, loved it. What well, I think I've probably watched it once every day this week. Um, there's a comic that it's based on uh, that is really great and. And, and you get where the, the foundation for the movie came from. Um, and then from that, I have binge watched um, Killing Eve. Uh, so great. Um, and uh, gosh, what else? Um, you know, honestly, I've been touching base with a lot of comfort watches too. Um, so. <laughs> The West Wing to make me feel better about the world a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that said, I also touch into Scandal um, because it is also just so, it's not as far out there as it used to be. Like I had to stop watching it when it was on TV because it was just, I can't, I can't. And now I'm like, you know what? None of this is out of the ordinary. Go ahead. Yeah, let's do this. Special black ops team in the White House? Why not? Ah! Right. Um, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's I'm I, I I the comfort shows for sure. Um and then like Knives Out, I've watched that I don't know, a million times since I bought it, since I since uh it came out on uh digital. It's such a great mystery. Uh, and fun, and, uh, you know, you have to pay attention, and, you know, those structures, movie structure is the thing I, I try to pay attention to a lot, um, for just how they tell stories that way, and how I tell stories um, in my fiction, um, I mean, because it, it works both ways, you know, there's stuff to, to learn both ways, so I do a lot of that. Real quick, let's go ahead and take our last break of the podcast. When we come back, you can find out more about Nikki via her website and where you can connect with her on social media. Oh, man, her Instagram. We'll talk about that. Uh, stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Nikki Dolson. So I know you have a website, so if you can direct mm -hmm. people to the address of your website and where they can interact with you on social media. Well, my website is my name, Nikki Dolson, and I K K I D O L S O N dot com. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram also under my name. Nikki Dolson, no spaces, no periods, just one name all squished together. I mean, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram there. Um, Twitter, I'm far more active on. Uh, Instagram, it's uh, I, ha I have a, an affection for a good print. 
So a lot of what's on there is uh, different fabric prints of what I'm wearing and mingled with, have you read this book? You should read this book. <laughs> There's a lot of that. I like it. That sounds fun, actually. <laughs> um, well, I thank you for that. And we've talked about a variety of different things today, but are, is there anything that we haven't touched on that you wanted to make sure to bring up or highlight in this interview? We, as writers, have, uh, you know, a choice of what we put out there. Um, you know, I, I stand by like the story just comes to you and you have to run with it. But I think that the choices we make and our fiction that we put out in the world uh, is important. Um, so, and I also think, you know, what we read is important. So, you know, read beyond your comfort zone. Um, reading those genres, those those authors you might not uh, naturally gravitate to. I mean, yeah, I'm saying force yourself to read somebody other than the standard white guy is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, there mm -hmm. is, there are so many wonderful writers out there. Um, Roxane Gay, Ramon Alam, uh, Leila Lamy. There, there's such, there are worlds yet undiscovered and they are out there at your fingertips if you just reach a little farther. Um, it's not always easy, but it's almost always worth it. Yeah, and I think in this day and age where we can follow people on social media and interact, we 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 can read outside of our, our comfort zones and our usual genres because there's so many options out there and you can find you can find lists of you know of different things that you maybe haven't considered reading before but um somebody has put together a top 10 50 100 list of <laughs> mysteries yes. by people of color or whatever what what have you so uh that's yeah. i i've done a lot of googling in my day <laughs> for that kind of stuff for sure yeah there's so yeah. much i mean it's it's I, you know, it's like my love of science fiction. I would love to be able to write it. And I've yet to figure out how to do it. But I'm like, I, I love this book. What, what is it I love about? It? Okay, so we have spaceships and politicians on another world. Well, that has to be its own little genre. Who else is writing in that? Um, and to just, you know, poke at it and try it. Um, you know, I think I. I I think everybody should swear about like, you know, the 50 page rule. If it, you're not still feeling it after 50 pages, get out. I mean, so be it. But um, for those who say, you know, I, I, they didn't connect with it. Um, I feel like they're not actually trying. Um, you know, it's, it's literally a thing that most of the rest of the world has does on a regular basis. Just try a little harder. Yep, I would agree. <laughs> so thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Um, again, the book is Love and Other Criminal Behaviors. Uh, Nikki, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's such a good time. Thank you once again to Nikki for joining me to talk about her short story collection, Love and Other Criminal Behaviors. I mentioned when we came back or when we were going to the last break that we'd talk about her Instagram and her Instagram is fabulous. I was joking with her after we stopped recording that she was just going to find me in her closet one day because she seriously has the best dresses. She is the Ms. Frizzle from Magic School Bus of authors and her her day job, but I'll just call her the Ms. Frizzle of authors, and I mean that in the best possible way. She has the best patterns, and all of her dresses are these fabulous sort of A-line kind of 50s looking almost cocktail, not cocktail dresses, but dresses, just something that I love, and so I was teasing her that she's just going to find me in her closet one day, which is creepy, and don't worry, I really don't. <laughs> have any intention of ever showing up in any author's closets 
you should never say never because someday what happens if I end up in somebody's closet? No, I just, I can't even come up with a scenario where that would happen unless I become fabulous best friends with somebody and then we are together in the closet picking out outfits. But trust me, I'm not going to stalk Nikki and her dresses. I will stalk her Instagram though because fabulous patterns, <laughs> which has nothing to do with books. But, uh, you know, there, there are stuff to do with books on the Instagram as well. But I was in love with the patterns. Enough from me. Thank you, Nikki, for putting up with my goofiness and for taking the time to talk to me about your short stories. It was very much appreciated. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners. You know I love you and love spending time with you, even though we can't see each other via podcasts. But if you are a fan of this podcast, as always, I would like to ask for you to write us a nice review. People usually only write reviews when they're negative. So if you have something lovely to say about this podcast, it would be so helpful if you could write that in a review uh, on whatever platform you listen to it would be awesome. You could give us a nice five-star review too, if that's an option on your platform. You could also follow us on social media, GSMC Book Review, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Hit me up. Let me know what you think about the books that I talk about, the authors that I talk about, if you've read any of those books, what you're reading in general. You know I love to talk about books, so hit me up on social media. I hope you are having a much better July than I am having, and I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I hope that you will join me on Friday for my next interview. It is a returning author. Uh, this author joined me for the first time back in 2018, and she is joining me again for an interview about her new book, The Ungodly Hour. That is author Lori A. Egan. So please join me for that interview. Lori's always a lot of fun to talk to. Have a wonderful week. Make sure that week involves plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.dsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.